afternoon. We are the Sheldon Cooper Experience, and today we will be presenting about the mass moment of inertia. I am Emily, and my teammates are Jeff, Ryan, and Tony. Before we begin, I would like to pose a question to you. Which of these objects you think would win in a race? They have similar radius and length, but one is hollow, and their densities are different. Now, the mass moment of inertia is a rigid body property that defines the torque necessary to achieve an angular acceleration uh, about an axis of rotation. The moment of inertia can vary depending on the axis of rotation that the body is rotating around, as well as the distribution of the mass and how much mass there is and the shape of the object. Hi, my name is Ryan Pickard, and I'm going to tell you more about the significance of moment of inertia. So we know that the moment of inertia is the resistance of an object to its change in motion. What, the, what I mean by resistance is that imagine an object rolling down a ramp through thick syrup. So the higher the moment of inertia, the more syrup it has to overcome in order to start rolling and continue to roll down the path. So therefore, ideally, the lower the moment of inertia, the more acceleration the object will have as it approaches down the ramp. And we can show this by demonstrating some calculations on some various items that we have here. I'm Tony. I'm, I'm going to tell you about the calculations we perform on the moment of inertia. So we know the moment of inertia of a body is a measure of the body, body's resistance to angular acceleration. And depending on the shape that the object has and on the axis that we're calculating the moment of inertia, about it will it will have a different value. So for our experiment, we choose three different objects: a cylinder, a ring, and a sphere. Each one of those having a different moment of inertia uh, on the z-axis, which is the vertical axis in this case. Uh, the equation for moment of inertia is just a relationship between the mass of of the object and the radius, and some coefficient that varies depending on the shape. Uh, we perform the calculations on five different objects, a wood cylinder, a hollow cylinder, a white disc, a small steel uh, cylinder, and an orange ball. And here is the radius of each object, the mass of each object, and here is the moment of inertia. From these calculations, we could predict which object will roll faster or slower, and when we actually raise the two of them, depending on which one has the lowest moment of inertia, that one should uh, reach the bottom of the ramp first. And the moment of inertia also varies depending on the axis that we calculated about. So if we have a cylinder and we calculate the moment of inertia on the z-axis, it will give us a, a relative small value because a cylinder is a shape that will roll easily. Now, if we calculate about the y-axis, which is the axis going out of the board, we will, uh, we will see how this equation will provide a, a bigger value for us because the object will provide more resistance to rotation on the y-axis. And we will see the experiments following. Hi guys, my name is Jeff, and here we're gonna have a physical demonstration of the relationship between the mass moment of inertia and resistance to motion. Now we have the two similar uh, cylinders that we had at the beginning of the demonstration. Do you remember which one you thought would win? Let's see which one does. As you can see, the wood cylinder won. This is because it has a smaller moment of inertia. For the second race, we have the ring and the small cylinder. According to Tony's calculations, the small cylinder has a smaller moment of inertia. Therefore, it should win the race. For the third race, we have the hollow cylinder and this white disc. The hollow cylinder and the disc have a similar radius, but again, the white disc has a small mo smaller moment of inertia. Therefore, it should win. And for the last race, we have this orange sphere and the hollow cylinder. The orange sphere has a smaller moment of inertia, and if what we have shown holds, it should win the race. 
So now that I hope that we have been able to show you a little bit more about moment of inertia and that you have been able to understand the, the relationship that it has to angular acceleration, just remember that the smaller the moment of inertia of an object, the more easily it will be able to break its resistance and have an easier time accelerating when it, while rolling.